Hey guys, it's the Friction here, Tag it Tank wants you wanted to call me, I really care. Welcome back to World Tanks, Advent Calendar Day 23 coming up, and Christmas is almost upon us, um, tomorrow, Christmas Eve, 24th, yeah. Um, I hope you have a, a very nice holiday season, uh, it just started for me, I'm almost there yet, so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have a bit of time to finally do some things that I wanted to do. And uh, I've heard, I've heard your cries. You want to see more wheeled tank gameplay. I've seen the votes, I've seen the surveys. You all love the wheeled tanks. And I can totally agree with you guys. Wheeled tanks are the best thing that have happened to this game. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know that in the survey you absolutely hated the wheeled tanks. I think 81% are think that wheeled tanks are a war crime and a crime against humanity. And I totally agree with you guys. Wheeled tanks have made this game such a joke sometimes but either way that's not today's topic vk705 no 7501k is going to be today's competitor now unfortunately it's not yet um time for a change so i'm kind of missing out on the screen but that's not too important because it is this tank trust me and it will cost you 7500 gold if you want to pick it up or you can buy it for real life money but uh, i don't really know the prices for that uh, 7,500 gold is on the lower spectrum for a tier 8 heavy tank. I think the only tank that went for 7,500 was the Renegade. And the Renegade was a very good tank. Like a very good choice if you wanted to pick that one up. Now, how about this tank? Is this a good choice? Now, first and foremost, this is for all the German main heavy tank players. Specifically, the players in the German tank treated like the backwards or the back-sitting turret. The... The VK like the VK4502, the Pentacom 7 or the VK4502A. Uh, the B version obviously having the turret at the rear. Now, those are some very interesting tanks. They are very good at side scraping. They are very good at peeking corners because the turret is at the back. But what was one of the main weaknesses of the VK5 uh, for no what, what was it? 7502B? Or, no, wait, that's that's wrong, that's, that's the only... Either way, the tier 9 tank, the weakness was that its turret in stock was pretty bad, and this tank has it as well. But let's jump into the firepower tabs and go through it chronologically so we can talk a little bit about the strengths and the weaknesses of this vehicle. You have a 128mm gun, which, as you imagine, has a very high alpha of 490 but also a very bad rate of fire. Its penetration with AP shells is quite good, 226 millimeters. You will not have a lot of trouble going through most of tier eight vehicles at, um, yeah, at battle rating tier eight or even at tier nine. If you need the gold ammo, the premium shells, you can go to APCR, which has a shell velocity of 1,150 and 263 millimeters of penetration. The shell velocity of the AP and the high explosive shell are both at 920 meters per second. So uh, it's not a huge drop off, but it's a bit of a drop off. The rate of fire, on the other hand, is what really makes this tank uh, a bit unflexible. Um, 3.6 second rate of uh, 3.6 rounds per minute that is a whopping 17 seconds reload time and that is with brothers in arms now how do you get that down because this is the thing that you will have to address most i think that is the most important thing to address with this tank because you know the rate of fire is horrible the gun traverse or turret traverse is also quite bad 23.47 degrees per second so the turret is not very well armored but we're going to talk about that in a second and it turns very slowly but it's a heavy tank, so you have to expect that the gun traverse is going to be slow. The gun depression is only 5 degrees. Uh, that is at the front. I'm not sure if uh, what the um, gun, de uh, gun depression is on the side. So we'll have to, we'll have to see that. Uh, I'm not sure if I have the mod where I can actually um, take a look at the tank and switch the turret around. But I know that the gun depression at the front is 5 degrees. And it could be more on the side because as you can see right here, there's like... Um, uh, a little bit of an elevation going on on the hull so don't quote me on that that it's going to be more or less I don't really recall but I think it has more gun depression on the side you have 15 degrees of gun elevation which is also not the best but it's okay you can do with that you can live with that 
And your aim time and dispersion, on the other hand, well, they are kind of... They're kind of mediocre. The aim time, especially 2.53 seconds for this kind of caliber, um, because of your your reload time, I think the aim time is not going to be uh, the most important thing because once you fire, you have a very long time to be able to to aim in again because it's going to take a very long time to get your shell loaded in. And the dispersion is also not very good. Only 0 0.37 dispersion at 100 meters. It's not the most accurate one, so this tank is supposed to be played in medium to close quarter engagements. And um, this is exactly where you have to learn how to play tanks that have rear facing turrets, and that means you have to learn to side scrape. The DPM that you have here is not very good. It's 1762, it's almost on par with auto loading tanks, and um, you don't get any of those benefits of having like four rounds in a magazine. So yeah, that's probably one of the things, the key things you wanna improve. And we're gonna talk about the equipment because I picked that off to show you guys what equipment would probably make the most sense and then which way I would go with the field modifications. Now, moving on to survivability, this tank has 1,600 hit points, which is very, very respectable. Uh, but I thought it was going to have more because some other vehicles, I think the E75TS, doesn't that have more HP? No, it has less. Sorry about that, that <laughs> I I was wrong. It has less HP, but 1,600, you can work with that. And if you use the survivability slot um, with the equipment, you can get even more out of it. The hull armor on this vehicle is really good. You have 180 at the front, 100 on the side, 80 on the rear. And the turret is 250 millimeter thick, 100 on the side and 80 on the rear. Now let's talk about the weaknesses of the armor. So let me go to armor viewer. Let's enable that. The lower plate on this vehicle is a bit of a, a trollish experience because this part right here where the armor aligns with the upper plate and the lower plate is really thick. So you really have to aim below that, um, that lining right there because that's the thickest part and this lower plate right here is 199 millimeters thick, so you must, you you would be able to pen. Uh, it's it's 160 millimeters thick, but with the angle, you get about 200 millimeters to more than 200. And the the lower, the very lowest plate down there, or the the angling down there, is also quite heavily angled. It's only 100 millimeters thick, but with that angle, it's very difficult to be able to penetrate that because it goes down. The upper plate, as you can see, is really thick, 280 millimeters effective with um, the angling. Uh, and this machine gun port is a bit of a distraction because it doesn't work as well as other machine gun ports because it's quite rounded. So, um, yeah, no easy pen to go right through the turret at the upper plate. Now let's go over to the turret. This is where the fun begins. You have the stock Henschel turret, or I'm not sure if it's a Henschel or Porsche. But it's the stock German tier, uh, Tiger II turret and it's a bit of an issue because these cheeks are quite flat right there as you can see and those cheeks are quite easy to penetrate if you have enough pen. Um, so they did increase it as it seems, 250 millimeters. but if you have, let's say, premium, heat, anything going right there is going to probably go right through. Now, um, the turret ring, on the other hand, is quite interesting. It's not as much of a weak spot as it once was with other vehicles. So the turret ring is no real place to fire. But you have one very big target, and it's a cupola on top, which is very large. Even, like, especially for German tanks, this is a large cupola, and it sticks out of the turret. So yeah, this is a very easy target. If you fight this vehicle, just fight it and shoot the cupola. Once he shoots you, you have basically three or four, no, let's say you have basically two shots at least where you can put one or two into the turret, into the cupola right there. Now, if you run around, uh, if you run around the tank, the side armor, you, there's no spaced armor right here. It's quite easy to penetrate and it's a very large tank. It's very long, it's a very big target. If you are out in the open and somebody spots you, you have a very bad day. Moving on to mobility. This tank is not very mobile. It's a super heavy German tank. You do not expect mobility to be the main concern. And you can see that 12 horsepower per ton. It's pretty horrible. <laughs> it weighs about 80 tons and you have an engine with 900 horsepower in it. Uh, and you can see that the top speed is only 30 kilometers per hour, 15 kilometers per hour in reverse. That is going to be very, very bad 
it's going to take you extremely long to get into positions and basically once you reach a position it's almost impossible to be able to relocate to another position the traverse speed is also quite horrible it's 25.99 with all the skills that we have so it would be even worse so this tank does not turn very well it's very easy to go around it to shoot it from the side and you know with the very bad turret traverse and the very bad um hull traverse or track traverse this tank is not going to be able to follow your tank if it's fast enough to drive around you and basically you have a very easy shot at the rear and the side because it's a heavy tank concealment wise it doesn't have any concealment it's very large and it's very easy to hit and spotting wise it actually has 380 meters base view range now 380 base view range for a tier 8 heavy is okay and you can up that with the right equipment and with the right field modifications so let's take a look what you could or should put on this tank at least on you know depending on my experience because um the way i play this game could be very different from the way you guys play this game so you have one survivability slot and with this survivability slot you obviously could go for um four different choices you could go for improved ventilations which would improve all the characteristics um you would get 413 meters base view range if you have the skills you get better traverse speed you get better aim time your dpm increases by a bit um so yeah the improved ventilations is always um, a choice that you can go for if you want to have basically the best improvement in all categories now if you want to have more armor or you want to have more structural um, integrity you want to have better re uh, repair speed um, you know all those heavy tank um, bonuses where you want to be the most effective in close quarter combat obviously the improved hardening is going to be very very nice for you because your suspension durability gets improved by quite a lot and this is something that really helps you out once you um you know when people start trying to track you it's going to really help you out and you get a 160 hp on top of that so that's definitely a choice as well um modified configuration gives you better repair speed um and you know it decreases the chances of catching fire but to be fair i would much rather go for improved hardening instead of modified configuration um obviously there's also spall liner which for um this heavy could be a blessing since artillery might be just focusing on you because you're a very big target so there's going to be less damage coming in from stuns it's going to be less damage um from from artillery and your crew is better protected but i think i probably go for improved hardening right there then what you want to improve with this tank is you want to get out of this abysmal rate of fire 3.6 rounds per minute is really horrible so you really should go for a gun rammer and i'm not just saying that because i want to have the max dpm it's because you want to have the least amount of uh, reload and uh, we're going to talk about the um, the final slot on the field modification in just a second but first let's pick the final um, object so for me since we can't really the, the mobility is really horrible it's really horrid if you think about it and also with improved hardening your tank gets uh, gets heavier and um, yeah thus it loses a bit of the specific power to weight so um, I, I I would be extremely uh, I would be <laughs> I would be like really hard pressed to put the turbocharger on it but I don't really think it's worth the four kilometers per hour um, because this tank is well well it could make a bit of a difference but still this tank is still going to be slow it's not going to be increasing your mobility by that much so um, yeah that is one of those things what I think for me personally is really important is that um, I want to have either decent aim time or I want to have better gun traverse speed. And gun traverse speed, that could be improved rotation. Um, the thing is, it only increases it by a little bit, but it does decrease the um, dispersion that you have, and it also increases the mobility, the traverse speed on your tracks. So generally speaking, you do get quite an upgrade with this. And if you use um, it in the uh, firepower tab, you can really 
get more out of this tank because your gun traverse and your tra uh, your track traverse is really bad on this vehicle and every little bit helps so i would probably go for this or i'd go for uh, enhanced gun laying drive but enhanced gun laying drive is something that you can probably skip and uh, you can do something else so let's go to the field modifications real fast and this is where we can talk a little bit about the uh, modifications so you can either increase or uh, get better top maintenance speed or maintaining top speed sorry it's always that word um or you could have better traverse speed and i think your tank well i'm not really sure if i would pick either one of them because with the traverse speed that you get in increased with the modification or with the equipment you don't really need to pick one of them um but maybe the penalty wouldn't be as bad um if you have the equipment on and you want to get the maintaining speed upgrade then the next one right here you either get better dispersion or you get better aim time i would probably go for better aim time because in my opinion that's more important because you're not going to be fighting at very far at uh, long ranges and then i would definitely go for improved view range because you have improved hardening on it so the uh, additional stun duration is not going to be that bad for you then finally i would go for the firepower tab to get the most out of the dpm that you can get to get it to 2000 or maybe to get that um, traverse speed even better that's how i would do it but obviously there's always a different way how you can um, choose equipment and everything but i hope i gave you a little bit of an in-depth view on how i would pick the equipment and the field modifications for this vehicle and now finally we're going to talk about is it worth it or not this tank certainly has its place in certain areas of the battlefield that is mainly um, close quarter combat where it can side scrape. Side scraping is a really cool thing with this tank. It's very effective um, because it has the turret at the back and it has some very good side armor. It has very good armor at the front. And with all of those things that I mentioned prior, you're gonna have a better uh, you're gonna have a better repair time for the tracks. You're gonna have better time to actually um, do your traversing with the tracks or with the turret so that is all going to help you very much um, so in that sense 7500 this is not a bad tank it's still a lot of fun but the biggest downside is just that rate of fire if you hate german tanks that have a very slow rate of fire this is not a tank for you but if you like those heavies where you really have to calculate every single shot and it's actually a lot of fun to side scrape this could be something for you 7500 is not a horrible price as well so i would say this is a tank that you'd have to decide on your own kind of experience if you want a german um, heavy tank a premium heavy tank then uh, this could be an option but obviously there's still the e75 ts which in my opinion is just better in almost every way especially in the mobility department then you also have the Löwe, which is also a very good very competitive vehicle nowadays that is also faster than the vk so yeah that is basically my verdict and i hope i could help you out and uh yeah have a have a good time and i'll see you guys tomorrow